this workflow example is going to show you how to use the add a user to a SharePoint group widget in the workflow conductor studio. <clears throat> I'm also going to uh, publish this workflow to a list, uh, save the site the workflow is on as a template so that I can uh, reuse the list with the workflow on it. So first my scenario I have a site collection where the top level site is called WFC. In this site collection I have a team site called committees and beneath committees I have uh, a few different committee sites and uh, I will be adding additional committees as time goes on. For each committee site there's a membership list. And this is where we add new members to the committee. We make them active and inactive. Each committee site has unique permissions. They don't inherit permissions from the top level site. And I have a committee 101 members group. And um, what I want is a workflow such that when I add a user to the membership list and their status is active, I want them automatically added to that members group on the site. And when I make a committee member inactive, I want them removed from that group. So <clears throat> we're going to build that workflow uh, from the membership list that's on the Committee 101 site. So I'm going to go to that membership list. I'm going to go to the list ribbon. And I'm going to click Create or Edit Workflows. My workflow conductor studio comes up and uh, for this workflow the first thing I'm going to do is add a conditional branch. And that conditional branch is going to check whether or not the member is active. And I click on dot 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 and I set the condition for the membership status equals active. Click OK. Click Apply. If the member's active, I'm going to add them to the group. And if they're not active, I'm going to remove them from a group. But first I need to figure out what the group name is. So actually for that, I'm going to uh, add a calculate widget up at the top. And I'm going to calculate the group name. And the group name, um, my naming convention for groups is the site name, then a space, and then the word members. So I can uh, create that by using our concatenate formulate, formula. So I'm going to go to uh, the lookup to easy reference and get the site name. And I'm going to concatenate it with the word members, but I'm going to put a space first and then members and then an end quote. And then I'm going to save that to a variable called var sp group name and it will be a text variable. So I'll add that, save changes, and there we see it set in the widget. I click apply. So now that I have the group name in a variable, I'm going to click on the add user to SharePoint group and I need to first specify what user and that user is the member in my membership list and then the group click on the magnifying glass and I go to that variable that I just created and click add. <coughs> now the person who adds the user to the group may or may not have the authority to add people to a uh, SharePoint group so I'm going to be sure that this happens OK by running it as the workflow designer and then click OK. Uh, next I'm going to uh, configure the remove user which is configured 
very similar to the other one. Select the user, select the group, run it as the workflow designer, click apply. Uh, now I'm going to go to workflow settings and give my workflow a name. This is going to be update membership SharePoint group. Um, I'm going to allow it to run manually, but I'm also going to start it if the item is created or changed. So it runs automatically and I don't have to worry about it. So I'll click Apply. Uh, once I do that, I'm going to save my workflow. And then I'm going to publish it to my membership list on my Committee 101 site. Okay, uh, once I publish that workflow to the list, uh, it closes my Workflow Conductor Studio for me. I can double check that that workflow is in fact associated by on this list by clicking Workflow Settings and I see it uh, right there. So then I can um, check it by first let's go check my uh, site permissions and I'll check on my Committee 101 members and I see that the only member there is me, Julie. So I'm going to go to my membership list. And I'm going to add a new member to my committee. Uh, this member is going to be Angela. And she's going to be active. Click Save. I'm going to add a second member uh, that's going to be Trang. And she'll be active as well. And you see uh, Angela's workflow is completed. Trang's is ongoing. So let's go check our Committee 101 list. And you see there are those two users. So if I go back to the membership list and make those users inactive, we should see that uh, <coughs> they should be removed from the group. Let's remove Trang also. Let's go check the group. And they're removed. So there we have it. It was a quick and easy add user to SharePoint group. But what I want to do now is um, let me go back to my membership and delete these two. So I have a clean site. And now I'm going to save this um, Committee 101 site as a template so I can use it to create other committee sites when I need them. So for that I go to Site Action Site Settings, uh, save the site as a template. I'm going to call it um, Committee Site. And I'm going to include content and click OK. My operation was completed successfully. So now I'm going to go uh, back up to my committee site. And you can see I have committee 102, committee 103. So I'm going to create a new committee site, committee 104. And to do that, I'm going to go to All Site Content, click Create, choose to create a site, go find my committee site, uh, name it Committee 104. The URL I use is just com 104. I'm going to click More Options, and I'm going to say I'm going to use Unique Permissions, <coughs> and then click Create. Uh, the next thing it asked me is uh, what users I want. So visitors, I want them to be my WFC visitors, and owners, I want WFC owners, but 
uh, for the members, I want that to be Committee 104 members. And you can see how SharePoint automatically names that. So I, I like that name, so I accept it and click, one, uh, click OK. So now I have Committee 104. I also have a uh, SharePoint group called Committee 104 members, and I'm the only one in it. So now uh, I also have the membership list. And if I look on the list ribbon and check the workflow settings, you'll see that my workflow is automatically associated with this list because I saved my site template with content. So if I go to my membership list here and I add Angela as a committee member, you'll see that the uh, Workflow is running. If I check permissions, we should see Angela added to Committee 4. So there you go. So you can see it doesn't matter uh, what I name my site, it's always going to add users in this membership list to uh, the members group.